Well, we're here once again, the final episode of this series. We will be facing Braga in the Europa Conference League final. Only a couple of fixtures to run through since the last time we met, the first of which was a 2-0 away win against West Sam Ian United. Frankie Grand and Guido Bomber got two goals inside 10 minutes to give us the away win. And finally, in the last episode of the Premier League, we drew one all at home against West Brom. Luis de Cordova had put us in front two minutes in, but Xavi then equalised from the penalty spot just shortly before half-time. We were already confirmed Champions League football before this game. It wasn't important, but it was important for West Brom, our former side. Now, I did not throw that game. I promise you, I did not throw. I wanted to win. Uh, I wanted to get second place in the Premier League, which we did end up getting. But um, that point was absolutely crucial for West Brom. All of our former sides now are going to finish this series in the Premier League. So we've got Leeds in fourth, Stoke City, of course, in second, Huddersfield in seventh, Barnsley in eighth, Birmingham in ninth, we've got Nottingham Forest in 14th, we've got Crystal Palace in 16th, and we've got West Brom finishing in 17th place on goal difference. Absolutely huge. So the Premier League campaign, from Stoke City's point of view, Hasn't been the best in terms of points. You know, we're eight points behind Leeds United, currently sitting top of our own personal leaderboard. But in terms of the league itself, a newly promoted side competing in Europe, even if it is only the Europa Conference League, and managing to finish second place in the Premier League is absolutely huge. Let's get them added to that leaderboard. So there we are, Stoke City take their place in fourth position. <laughs> I mean, we're finished second in the Premier League and we're fourth on our own personal leaderboard. I mean, it just goes to show you the strength and the quality that we've been able to produce over the course of the past 20 seasons or so in this year of eight teams in the Premier League. Leeds United being our best, finishing in fourth position on 78 points, which is a bit crazy. West Brom and Birmingham in second point, uh, second place, joint with 75 points east. West Brom finishing in second, Birmingham City finishing in third place. Huddersfield and Crystal Palace joined third, 73 points, fourth and fifth respectively there. I can't believe I didn't get Champions League football with Crystal Palace. Stoke City, of course, second place with 70 points. Nottingham Forest, sixth. Barnsley, six, 66 points and 64 points. Absolutely phenomenal stuff. And I'm very proud of what we've been able to accomplish. We might never have conquered the Premier League, but we certainly conquered the Championship. But of course, our story with Stoke City isn't over Annabel Zaratia won Young Players of the Year, which is absolutely fantastic. Luis de Cordova came third in terms of the top goal scorer. We personally won Manager of the Year. And we do actually have a couple of players in the team of the year. Guido Bomber at centre-half and Annabel Zaratia up front. So, our final game in charge of Stoke City and the final game of the series is a European final. The Europa Conference League. I'm happy about it. It was nice to have a little bit of a change from the Premier League action that we've been doing over and over again and having a European campaign that's ending up in this is absolutely fantastic. This will be the lineup for this game then. Zaverovic in goal, David Nuno and Zach Howes at centre-back because Guido Obama's having to play right wing-back. Walter Delonso of course is suspended and Bastian Stelvagen is unregistered for the competition. Mario Buckle will start in defensive mid mid midfield with Oleg Korobov getting the nod over Radic Rada at left wing-back. Mauricio Chan and Sokolov being in the centre of the park. Victor Hugo Cruz playing in behind. Annabel Zarati and Lewis De Cordova. Frankie Grand will certainly be coming on in this game no matter what. I need to get him some game time. Uh, just, just to see him go one last time. And Braga are the competition. No familiar faces in their first 11. Of course, we haven't really been in Europe before, so we haven't faced Braga before. Let's get into the game and see how we get on in this first half. Now, I know it's a European final, but it's not really a suit and tie sort of affair. You know, it's more jacket and jeans or casual. Um, glasses, professional. That's what I was thinking. First highlight of the game, Annabel Zarate with a free kick. Torres with a decent save. A nice free kick by Zarate there, almost putting us 1-0 up. We do get a corner out of it. Ole Korobov takes it and it gets cleared. Another corner. This time it's Annabel Zarate to take. And Luis de Cordova is there. And Luis gets his 27th goal of the season to put us 1-0 up. 21 minutes in. He hasn't been in the best of form recently, Luis de Cordova. Uh, that's why Frankie Grant has been getting a lot more game time than you would usually expect. But he's getting six goals a day to put us in front in the biggest game of our season. 38 minutes gone. Braga are on the attack just before half-time. And Ivo Spasov's fourth goal of the season levels things up. 
I mean, I wasn't expecting that. All right, I was not expecting that. I thought we were going to maybe even steamroll Braga after that first goal, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. They are definitely competitive in this game, and uh, we've got some work to do. It has been a pretty dominant first half from ourselves, but we find ourselves going in a level. Um, I'm ha I am happy with the performance so far. I'm going to tell the boys as such and hope that they don't get too complacent. Our defence not really having the best of games so far, um, which is a little bit concerning. And obviously, Guido Bomb is probably our best centre-half, at least by the coaches' reports in our squad. So not having him could cause us some issues. But I'm, st I'm still not concerned with 20 minutes to go with nothing happening. Dropped the tempo a little bit. We've dropped our passing directness. Hopefully that could at least lead to more possession and hopefully a, an opportunity. Anything. 10 minutes to go. We're going to make some changes then. Frankie Grand's going to come on for Luis De Cordova. I'm not taking off Annabel Zarate. He's too pivotal to maybe change this game for us. I want to bring on Branko Milanovic. And it's going to be Mauricio Chan sitting on a yellow card. Who is going to make way in the centre of midfield. 10 minutes to go. Come on boys. Well this is not how I wanted to finish the series at all. No highlights in the set. Finally. Korobov. Corner. It's played in. Set piece. Oh, I mean is he offside? He's, he's, off, he's offside. I mean, he didn't even give us the courtesy of showing us for more than two seconds. We go into extra time. Right, now I've just criticised them. A couple of them seem motivated, a couple of them not so much. We do have ourselves another substitute that we can make. Mario Buckle has struggled. He's our best performing player. But we're going to bring on Chris Dubelbiss for him in the defensive midfield. The last thing we need is to get um, picked apart purely down to fitness concerns. As we go on the attack, Korobov on this left-hand side whips it in. Zerati is there. Annabel. Come on. The highlight is continuing. Braga are in possession. Coming down the left-hand side. Abraham cuts in. Switches the play to the right. Oviedo. Come on, boys. Win this ball back. Win this. We do. Vitaly Sokolov wins it. Buckle to Victor Hugo Cruz. Sets away Frankie Grant. Come on, Frankie. Oh, Frankie, you could have been the hero. We'll stick with... No, no, we're not sticking with the corner. We're not seeing it. Half time in extra time. We will kick off for the second half. If this goes to penalties, I'm going to be devoured. Highlight now, Frankie Grand on the left-hand side. Back to Dubelbiss. Come on, Frankie. You can be the difference maker. Guido Bomber receives the ball on the right-hand side. He can't cross, so he goes all the way back to Chris Dubelbiss with a pass. Back to Bomber. Come on, son. Vitaly Sokolov whips it in. Oh, Frank Frankie Grand! Frankie Grand, the Stoke City Academy graduate. He might have just won us some European glory. His 17th goal of the season. The two substitutes combining in Branko Milanovic and Frankie Grand. And we get what we deserved. A nice little head down. Easy finish in the end for Frankie. And we've just got a few minutes to survive. We're going to drop off attack and go to balanced. We do have an extra sub to make. We're going to bring on Radic Rada for Oleg Korobov at that left wing back role. And with four minutes to go. Oh, dirty challenge by Braga. That's a second yellow card. They are now down to ten men. It's all falling apart in the final few minutes for Braga. And if we can just hold on, boys. We get our... Oh, free kick. Annabelle's are right here. It's a penalty. Come on, lads. Let's just put this penalty away and put an end to any speculation as to what is going to happen in this game. It's going to be Vitaly Sokolov to step up to take it. Come on, Vitaly. Put us 3-1 up. Let's just start celebrating now. There we have it, boys. Vitaly Sokolov's 15th goal of the season puts us 3-1 up in a European final. And we are taking European glory home with Stoke City. There is the final whistle. There is the full time. There is the end of the series. Stoke City 3, Braga 1, <laughs> Europa Conference League. Oh, fine, it's the Europa Conference League. It's not the Europa League. It's not the Champions League. But it's still pretty special. We got there winning domestic trophy whilst in the Championship. We now win the European trophy. We've got Champions League football for next season for Stoke City. So they are going to have another European adventure next season. And we end the series on a massive, massive high. Here we go then, let's go through the end of season stuff with Stoke City. Stoke will justifiably look back on the season with a smile on their collective faces as they defied pre-season expectations of relegation and instead mounted a campaign in which they secured continental qualification for next season. Not too shabby at all. The Potters are one of the competition surprise packages consistently define expectations and own largely to an impressive spell of form between August and October. That saw them rise to second were able to celebrate a successful campaign. Match of the season was our 4-0 win against Leeds. Particularly now being able to see the end of the season table with Leeds finishing in fourth. That was a massive, massive win. A moment to forget was a 3-0 away defeat against Arsenal. We were 100% full. 
throughout the entirety of the season. So you could uh, justifiably ask for a board, uh, a stadium expansion from the board there, I would imagine. Obviously, winners of the Europa Conference League, finishing fifth round of the FA Cup, runners up in the Premier League, third round of the League Cup. We've already won that, so we weren't too bothered. The board's expectations for next season look like they're going to be around a mid-table finish for whoever ends up taking over at Stoke City. And that's pretty much it, boys. So Stoke City have some fantastic players on the hands, particularly the likes of Frankie Grand, who I didn't sign. He was already here, academy graduate. Hopefully, they can continue to develop him into a really, really special striker. Annabel Zarati as well, absolutely unbelievable striker. Alongside Luis de Cordova as well, they've got three top top quality strikers and two of them are English which is really really nice to see. Vitaly Sokolov, our biggest signing of the window, um, he was fantastic in the centre of midfield as you can see. 53 games, 15 goals and 11 assists is not too shabby at all. Luis de Cordova ended up finishing top goal scorer. 27 goals, 9 assists in 49 games is not too bad. Frankie Grand was actually above Annabel Zarate with 17 goals in 20 starts with 16 off the bench. That is pretty, pretty good from our young English lad. Annabel Zarate, he was the assist king. He wasn't really the goal king. He got 15 goals and 26 assists in 43 games, which is pretty good for a striker. Usually them are the sort of um, things you see from a winger, maybe. And one last person we'll talk about is Guido Bomber, our, basically our set-piece guy. <laughs> That's what he was. Let's be frank. He's got 20 jump and reach. He was six foot six. His 11 heading was a bit poor, but he had 17 bravery, 16 anticipation, 16 decisions, all contributed to him being a fantastic threat in the air. And he got 10 goals in 30 year Premier League games from corners, basically. Um, pretty, pretty good. As you can see, if I hide in inactive deals, we have agreed a lot of deals for Stoke. So hopefully we have set them up for quite some time in terms of young players and at least been able to make profit on a lot of these boys. Um, Still got 46 million quid and 150k per week in the wages. So whoever comes in will have money to spend to bring in their own players. And without further ado, lads, this is the final time we'll be doing this. We will be resigning as manager of Stoke City with immediate effect. I've got no intention of changing my mind. Sorry, board. Um, and that is going to be that. And that's it. It's a little bit bittersweet. Um, I would have liked to have really, really competed for the Premier League with one of those sides. And I think looking back and reflecting on the teams that we've managed and the squads that we were able to assemble, I think Crystal Palace were actually the closest team to actually being able to do that. We just, injuries hit that season and really, really ruined it. As you can tell by the leaderboard, Crystal Palace were pretty far down. Um, but Leeds, fantastic. Huddersfield, fantastic. Birmingham City, unbelievable. Um, we've had some really, really, we've been able to accumulate some fantastic players and create some really, really good squads. And... I still, I'm still adamant that the best part of football manager, at least for me, is that promotion to the top league. That first season, you know, you're up against the odds. You've got access to finance and players that maybe you've never had before. And being able to indulge in that in this series has really been pleasurable. And I've enjoyed it very much. And I hope you have too. In terms of what's coming next. Next episode will actually be another Yo-Yo Man episode, but it'll be a look into the future. I think we'll go maybe 10 years into the future and see how every single club has done without us even being in the game world anymore. Let's see how they can get on, see if any of them can at least stay in the Premier League. That would be first objective, but then look to compete for the top spots, the Champions League qualifications, and of course, the Premier League. I hope one of them can do it. One of our former sides to win the Premier League without us in charge will be absolutely amazing that's what i hope we're going to see following from that the sunderland save will continue which has been on a massive hiatus obviously the streaming didn't really go so well in terms of the technicals basically so i'm going to be continuing that as the same sort of form as yo yo man it will continue as a video series rather than a streaming series and the next episode of that will be the wrap up of our first season in the premier league so if you are interested in that type of sort of content please get yourself subscribed we're coming to the tail end of Football Manager 2020. I understand that the, the drive and the want for this sort of content so it starts to wane about now. But I'm still going to continue doing it. Sunderland is just, it's my club. I'm going to see what I can do with them in the Premier League. But anyway, boys, if you have enjoyed this series, please consider leaving a like. And I know a lot of you are watching this and not subscribed. Get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.